Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Would you join me again today in welcoming Professor Greg Stevens to this Thanks. broadcast? Oh, Thanks. man, how many weeks have we done on Covenant? I don't know. A few. Yeah, <laughs> a few. It's a number. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when we talk about nations and so forth, of course, our primary concern as uh, first of all as Christians and of course our nation. But this, this will apply to any nation. But of course we're, we're seeing things right here and I mentioned this last week a number of times and already this week. At my age, 84, I've, I've seen a lot happen, a lot come and go and uh, particularly political things during World War II, that, that was very interesting to me. And then, then after the war and years later, go back and study those things. And uh, because I, I, I really like and enjoy the military. <clears throat> and uh, let's read our golden text here, Greg, from mm -hmm. the 15th chapter of the book of Genesis, the 16th verse. But in the fourth generation they shall come here again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. When sin is full, then judgment has to come. Has to. <clears throat> and, and, and God, because He gives... He is so patient and long-suffering. He gives people a long, He gives nations a long time to repent. Yes, He does. And as a nation, He has given us a long, 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 long time to stop killing unborn babies. Well, <clears throat> One of the primary sins of the Amorite. Yes. Now, we've seen this. It goes back a long, long ways. With the Democratic Party going back to the Civil War, I won't go into all that. <clears throat> because all that back there is, 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 we're talking about it right now. Yeah. And when, and, and I, oh, it struck me, Craig, it hurt me, it, it hurt me like somebody had really gut punched me. Mm. When the leadership, I'm not talking about the whole party, I'm talking about leadership. And I'm, and I'm not talking bad about people. It's the yielding of people to the wrong stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Through and a largely long, they don't know. No, it's a long period of deception. Oh yeah. So, and the leadership of the of that party voted unanimously. I remember. <clears throat> to no longer have anything to do with God in the platform. Yeah. Now the platform not only includes the leadership that is put together by party members all over the United the States. Country, yep. And so is the Republican platform. And the platform shows the heart of the party. Yeah. And they said, we are no longer, no, they didn't put it just like that. We are now the party of the atheist, mm -hmm. the, and they, they named off well, agnostic, yeah, all these different lists. And, and all of the perversion list and everything. For that is the largest religion in the United States. And they put God completely out. Now, what did the apostles Paul say in the book of Romans? They did not want God in their thinking. Right. So God turned them over to a reprobate I put it like he turned them over to a confused mind that bad looks good. 
Right. And, and we need to do this. We really need to do this. <clears throat> so now, in my opinion, and then this is just what it is. It's just, if this is my, my opinion. I'm not, I'm not speaking for the ministry and all of that. And of course, what I say does, but, but, but still, in my opinion, when it comes to the place where it doesn't matter anymore, well, so what? Oh, well, you know, this, this is all part of women's health. No, it's money. Yeah. Big money. Mm -hmm. yes, it and it, but, the, but the excuses are, are enormous. Mm -hmm. And here again, I'm talking about the leadership. And now we, 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 we know. I mean, the absolute evidence is there again and again and again and again and again in, in states all over the United States that the, the so-called Dominion voting machine was created for the purpose originally of controlling foreign elections of dictators and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And somehow it got over into, into being used in the Democratic Party, the leadership of the Democratic Party. In my opinion, a number of years ago, I, and like I said, when they announced that, it I was just like I was gut punched. Yeah. It hurt. We need the Democratic Party. We, we need the Democratic Party. We need the Democratic Party of, <clears throat> of back in, during the days uh, when they were, they, they were in opposition to the Republican Party, but they sat down and they worked with one another and, and, and you, you either liked it or you didn't, but there was no way they were going to abort children. That's just out of the question. You don't do things like that. Until a Supreme Court judge decided we will. The legislature never did that. No. So I'm, I'm praying and I'm believing God and I'm standing on the word of God, but I know I heard this and I have to be very, very, very cautious. Don't, don't pray this about people. I, I, very, oh God, break it and remake it. Cleanse it. Mm -hmm. Get it back on its feet. Get, get, it, get its head straight again. And get God back in, that, in the leadership of that party. We need them. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's in deep trouble. And I am of the opinion, and it's just simply my opinion. But, I mean, you know, I do have the Spirit of God. That I believe that the sin of the leadership of that party is full. Mm. Where judgment, it, it has to happen. The killing babies has got to stop. This has to stop. Right. It's cursing this nation. Yeah. And we don't want another 9-11. So what that is, is you're talking about iniquity. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Iniquity twists God's order of things and calls it right. And just, it'll totally twist everything that's happened. Um, it, it'll reward one group and punish the good. I mean, and, that, and that's what we see. And that's the frustration you see. So when God tells them this in Genesis 15, it's going to happen in the fourth generation, 400 years. It'll happen 430 we years saw later. It, we saw yeah. it in 2020. Right. Governors of certain states, the way they handle church, Right. The way they handled A COVID. very close friend of mine on our board of directors. Mm -hmm. Pastors of church. I've preached in it many, 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 many times. They came to arrest him because he had people on Sunday. The police came. If you'd have said that 
20 years ago, 40 years ago in America, that the poli there will be a police state that will come, and this is just starting, police states are just starting, that are gonna come to your house of worship or come to your home to arrest you? Because you're having church during the Democrats, the time when people Even have Democrats the would have been, what? They would have, no. And know. one of the police officers says, Pastor, we, we don't want to be here. We don't want to be here. And so, and, and he had to sue the governor to have church. My God. Now that happened all over the United States. And the difference of that, and this is, this is the reason I'm so concerned over this, Greg. The governor of the state of Texas said, no, 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 church is essential. We're going to have church one way or the other. We're going to have church. And we are not going to open the abortion clinics. That is not, that is not a necessary thing. And I figured it up just there in, in just a little while, right here in the state of Texas, it saved, it, it saved 2,500 babies. And that was Glory no telling how many since then. Hallelujah. He shut it down. But when the righteousness are ruling, the people rejoice. The people rejoice. But what's the other half of that? Well, when they're not. When the wicked rule, the people mourn. Mm -hmm. And the, cast the, off all restraint. Yeah, the, the, the back of that is grieve. They grieve. And one, 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 one translation says, they groan like a dying soldier on the battlefield. Mm. See, so all of that stand that happened that you were talking about with Texas, when I saw the thing, the weather thing that hit a few months back in Texas, yeah. that was spiritual. That, that whole thing was part of the groaning as a part of a, an attack when the government, the federal government didn't get involved in helping send a few blankets to Texas. <laughs> blankets didn't do anything. We need the power on. You know, but all of those things are mankind trying to govern himself apart from God. And you can't do it. So you can't get upset about this stuff. That's why God told uh, Abraham, his friend, here's what's going to happen. Joshua is going to come, and Joshua is going to be the one that will fight the battle against the Amorites and drive them out. Joshua is a perfect look at the book of Revelation. It's a perfect look. The final battle with the Amorite, <coughs> that spirit that's in the earth today, will be done by another Joshua, but his name is Yeshua, Jesus. Yes. And I just started to say, Joshua, <laughs> it's the same name. Same name. It's not a coincidence. No. That Yeshua led them into this. And, and I'm, I'm satisfied that the English translators Englishized the name of Jesus to separate Jesus from Joshua. Oh, sure. They did it with a lot. And then, and then they slipped up a little bit in the book of Hebrews. <laughs> but anyway... Well, I believe Paul wrote Hebrews, and I believe he did that. I believe he did it on purpose. On purpose to let us know. Joshua comes in. Now, what happens? You get, he sends two spies, or I'll put it this way, two witnesses <clears throat> in before the destruction of the, the most fortified Amorite city, Jericho. Well, two witnesses are going to come back before this final battle. That's right. Do you see all the parallels? They're going to blow the trumpets. He's going to break. God's going to have them break most of the Torah ordinances in the Battle of Jericho, which is an interesting thing. Levites are out front in battle. Levites were never to be out front. That's right. But he put them out front. I never thought about it, but he that's did. right. He did. he did it. They were out front. And on the seventh day, you don't work, and he has them march more times on the seventh day. So he's trying to show them the law itself is not going to do it. It's, it's going to be this Messiah, Jesus, that's going to come through, that's right. and he's going to lead you. And then there's silence. Remember that? They had them be quiet. Nobody could talk or anything. In heaven, there'll be a half hour of silence. I just started to say, yes, I just started to say. It's a picture right. of it's what's picture. coming. Yeah, it is. And so when I showed you at the beginning of last week that wheel within a wheel and the pattern and the way God does things, this Amorite battle is in front of us, the final one. You and I, Brother Copeland, are going to be part of that battle. We're going to see this thing unfold. Now, we're not going to have to fight. Jesus is like, just be with me. You won't, I won't need you, but just be with me. He's going to take care of this thing once and for all. Matter of fact, I'll show you something. Um, uh, let me give you a verse of Revelation chapter 18, talking about the future battle mm. with the Amorite. Mm. 
Now, you remember there were seven seals, seven trumpets? Yes, yes. They blowed the trumpets seven times in Joshua. It's all a picture of what's in front of us. And so don't be discouraged against the Democrats or the Republicans That's it. or Trump I mean, or anything. This, this is a temporary thing right now that God's going to fix. And, and yes. he fixes this. This nation is going to be reborn. Yes. And it's going to be greater than it's yes. ever been in the past. And we're right there. Yes. We're right there. We're so close to it. We're right there. For him who has ears to hear, you need to understand, don't be dismayed by 2020 and arguing about, well, the prophet said this and this said that. And this. No, we're right on God's timetable. Yes. The iniquity of the Amorite. You were so right when you heard that. We're right on the timetable. <laughs> Let me show you Revelation talking about the future of this and see if you hear some some. Uh, familiar words. Verse 3, Revelation 18, verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth. There's business with government. Yeah. We've watched it happen with Facebook and Twitter and all of this other, the My Pillow guy censoring him. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. They've partnered together. And I heard another voice from he heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Come out, my people. That's the word. That you, not, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins, verse 5, have reached unto heaven. It's filling up. And God hath remembered her <laughs> iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her according to her works in the cup which she had filled with her double. There it is, there Brother it Copeland. Is. With the, he, Jesus is telling us, listen, this thing is full. This cup is full now. I'm going to come handle this thing. Not everybody that left Egypt was an Israeli with Moses. People were smart enough to say, we're going with them. They have been blessed. They have great abundance coming out of here. None of these things that happened. You can find that in Exodus 12. You can find it in Numbers 11, just quick reference. Not everybody was Jewish. Not everybody was Israeli. Not everybody was part of the covenant, but they went with them. Yeah, they did. And those are the people that caused problems for Moses a little bit later. Those are the ones that are going to start complaining about things. They outwardly identified with God's people, but nothing inwardly had been done with them in the covenant. There are people today that outwardly identify with church and the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But they haven't inwardly, and I believe, I believe a first example of that was in Acts chapter five, Ananias and Sapphira. They there were you people are. that outwardly had identified with this, and they're going to be part of this blessing thing, but they didn't have the right spirit. About no, it. and they were leaders. They were in the leadership of the church. That's exactly right. Because Peter called them by name, yep. and that's a big church. Yes, sir. Great, a huge church. That's thousands right. and thousands of people in that church, and none of them lacked for anything. And Satan was trying to get away in there. And, and it's real interesting because of the phraseology in the scripture there, it says a certain man. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the same thing with um, uh, the centurion in Acts chapter 10, a certain man, a certain centurion. So when it says a certain person, a certain this, <clears throat> leads me to think they're not, they're not part of the family. They're not a disciple. He didn't call them a brother or my brethren. He said, a certain man, a certain this. But he doesn't say that. A after. certain rich man. A certain rich man. And Lazarus called uh -huh. him by name. Uh -huh. But a certain rich man. Right. Paul will write to the Thessalonian church. The Thessalonian church had questions concerning the rapture. They thought they had missed God already. They thought this thing had already ha happened. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul is going to refer back to some of this iniquity stuff. And uh, verse 15, he'll say this, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Verse 16, forbidding us to speak. Boy, have we not seen that? Oh my goodness, yes. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins. Filling it up. All of this stuff, this persecution stuff, all of this COVID stuff, all of this church, you can't have church. You can have church, but you can't sing like they did in California. 
all of this is filling that iniquity cup up and it's filling quickly. Yes, it is. For the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Paul writes in Thessalonians, do not be discouraged by anything you're seeing. These are all signposts on the road to heaven for us. What they're experiencing in the early church, I command you to preach and teach no more in that name. It's all the way the church started and the same things, the devil's replaying the same handbook at the end. Yeah. And we can't be upset about it. Now, someone said, uh, Brother Kenneth, what, what do you think is going to happen in 2024? I don't have any idea. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I am of the opinion um, strong, I might add, strong opinion mm -hmm. that there are some things that are going to happen between now and then mm -hmm. that have huge effect on the, the 2024 when we have the presidential election again. Now, we cannot, we cannot ignore the midterm elections. No. This huge where you'll change and it. In some ways, as important, even more important than the presidential election because it has to do with judges. It has to do with governors in some places. And it has to do with... Well, Every congressman. Uh, yeah. Yes. Some senators. That's right. Vitally important. And so something has to happen between now and then on the same machines. Mm -hmm. Those I curse those machines <laughs> in the name of Jesus. I curse them right now in Jesus' name. As a prophet of God and a minister of the gospel, I curse wrong, crooked machines. It's not the machine's fault, but the machine can be used to manipulate. Yeah. The software. Yeah, the, it's the software, anything. And that, that has to be stopped. That has to be stopped. Because it put other nations involved in our elections, and that has to quit That's right. now. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. And in some ways, we're already into World War III. Because yeah. Yeah. it is worldwide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we're in this... We, we have a responsibility in this on our natural side, but we're not in this because we're covenant people. We will come out with abundance. Yes, sir. We'll come out with the nation that we want. Because we oh. have a, it's, we Great. got proof of it. World War II, our guys were training with wooden rifles. And we came out the end of that war with more steel than we could use, more oil than we could burn, and the people were more prosperous than they had ever been in the history of this nation. And we're out of time. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.